Hi everyone, I'm Karan and welcome to Karan's Gyan. The concept on focus for today is the merger of Bharti Infra and Indus Tower. So this has been a very prominent news these days. And as you know, today there was a news that Bharti Infra and Indus Tower's merger will be delayed due to uh, deliberations about Supreme Court's decision on AGR dues and how AGR dues will be paid. So uh, I thought, well, if I gave you a news about the delay of Bharti Infra and Indus Tower merger, why don't I give a video of how this merger was actually decided and how will this merger actually take place. So for me to uh, give you a brief, brief background, so as you know, uh, a telecom company, you know, a telecommunications company that is providing telecommunications services to its customers, it will have its front company, you know, like for example, Bharti, Bharti has a front company of Bharti Airtel, where Bharti Airtel, uh, you know, uh, provides telecommunications service to its customers. However, it will have a subsidiary which which will be responsible for its tower setup for its infrastructure setup because uh, there are two aspects to telecommunication business one aspect is you got the infrastructure and the other aspect is uh, creating a base of customers that will use telecommunications to utilize that infrastructure so bharti airtel is the front company it will uh, it will get in customers that will use its services However, who's providing the services? The tower side of the business. So this is what Bharti Infratel is. It is, a, it is India's leading provider of tower and related infrastructure. All right. And it deploys its own, uh, it deploys, owns, manages telecom towers and communication structures for various mobile operators. So as of now, we only had three companies in India, but back when they used to, when they used to be multiple companies in India, Bharti Airtel used to provide its tower services not just to its parent company Bharti Airtel, but also to various other companies. But now it's not the situation. Uh, the company has consolidated portfolio of ninety one thousand towers. All right, so I'll exp I'll give you a detailed example in this detailed uh, description. So Bharti Infratel has about 40,000 towers while Indus Towers has about 1,23,000 towers. Alright, uh, Bharti Infratel basically owns a 42% stake in Indus Towers already. So it has, uh, you know, 42% of this 1,20,000 uh, 20, towers also. As a result, it has a total of 91,000 telecom towers, which is a lot. Bharti Airtel and Vodafone India cellular are Vodafone India are basically the largest customers of Bharti Infratel. Earlier there used to be various other companies that used to be customers, but now Reliance has destroyed everybody. So, uh, what is the shareholding of Bharti Infratel? As you know, Bharti Infratel is a public listed company. Uh, Bharti Infratel, 53.5% uh, of Bharti Infratel is owned by its parent organization Bharti, Bharti Airtel, 46.5% is owned by the public, whereas for Indus Towers, as I told you, 42% of Indus Tower is owned by Bharti Infratel, and 42% of Indus Towers is owned by Vodafone, 11.15% is owned by Idea, and 4.8% is owned by the Providence Group. So uh, you would ask me, Vodafone idea is the same company now. Why have I given you a different uh, shareholding pattern? Well, of course, they're a merged entity, but their assets have, you know, it's a, it's, it's better to show you how is, its assets are distributed uh, despite it being a merged entity. So if I see a merged entity right now, about 53.15% would be Vodafone idea stake. Okay, as I, I gave you the shareholding pattern of Indus Towers, Indus Towers is an independently, independently managed company that offers passive infrastructure to all telecom operators and other wireless service providers such as broadband service providers. So it basically has a, a tower and it has a telecommunication and broadband 
based uh, so like you know infrastructure it has been promoted under joint venture of bharti airtel vodafone idea vodafone india and you know alta bila telecom which is basically uh, idea so why is this independently managed because it basically doesn't have one strong shareholder it's equally divided among various companies and uh, as and this basically uses passive infrastructure now to you people who are kind of confused on what is happening right here i would give you a basic idea about passive infrastructure so it is the sharing of telecom infrastructure among various service providers in the telecom industry where comp- competitors are becoming partners in order to reduce their increasing investments so now you have to set up infrastructure and infrastructure will be thousands of crores of rupees so each company would set up their own infrastructure and would compete in this cutthroat market so why not be- become partners in setting up infrastructure set up your own company set up your own front company but why don't you share your infrastructure and basically pay your dues accordingly so that's what they did they are basically sharing infrastructure so that's why they've created different company called indus towers indus towers has basically set up the infrastructure and whatever uh, you know data they are utilizing they'll be paying to indus towers and since indus towers is basically owned by them they are basically owning the towers as well so they're just sharing the telecom infrastructure i understand this would be complex but uh, if you think about it it's, it's it's not pretty hard it's just the company structure that can be complex anyways so uh, now what is happening is uh, now since jio has come a lot of companies have to consolidate to reduce their costs some companies were uh, eliminated from the telecom industry vodafone I, vodafone and idea had to merge consolidate together so that they are able to compete Airtel itself is a strong company, so it didn't face any troubles. But still, it is in turbulent times these days. So they have planned to, you know, combine Bharti Infratel and Indus Towers. So how will the transaction structure look like? So basically, uh, Indus Towers would amalgamate with Bharti Infratel. Bharti Infratel. There will be an amalgamation with Bharti Infratel. Amalgamation means merging. So Indus Towers will be merged with Bharti Infratel. and the new name would be of both the entities would be indus towers and with the amalgamation it can give uh, previous shareholders of indus towers a chance to exit that means it can give idea group a complete chance to exit so idea group can uh, sell its 11.15 percent stake in indus towers completely uh, and there's a there's a option for providence group which is a independent group to uh, you know investment company to partially exit so partial and full exit options to idea and providence so the deal is that idea has been given a full option to exit from indus towers they can sell their entire stake or um, and whereas providence has been given uh, you know an option to sell its 3.35% stake it already has a 4.85% stake so uh, it will be left with 1.5% stake in indus tower Uh, how will this be financed uh, bharti infratel would mm, do a leveraged buyout by what i mean by leverage buyout it will take leverage and it will buy out indus towers so it will use debt basically this is what leverage means acquiring debt and it will use cash flows from indus towers so it will use internal future cash flows from indus towers it may monetize certain assets from indus towers it may sell some assets to finance the deal it may uh use the future cash flows the future earnings of indus towers to you know fund this deal uh, so there might be a deal with idea providence that uh, will keep paying you over the course of the next you know some amount of years so that's what they mean by internal cash flows so option 1 100% exit option for uh, so there are basically two options there is a basic option for uh, partial exit or full exit for uh, idea and providence so there's an option so either they can choose that or they cannot choose that you know so first let us assume there is there are two options basically you know idea and providence take a stake in the merged entity or there's 100% exit option to idea and partial exit option to providence all right so uh, if idea exits completely and uh, providence takes its partial exit option this would be the shareholding 
so in the new combined entity vodafone would have about um, you know vodafone would have about i'd say uh, you know vodafone would have 29.4% uh, stake bharti airtel 37.2% stake the public would have 32.3% stake and providence would have 1.1% stake as you can see here this gives you a pie chart i have this pdf so if you guys want this pdf i can send it to you it can be quite clear uh, you can comment and uh, i'll i can share it to you at your email id uh, the second stake is providence and idr take a stake in the merge entity so basically this would uh, this would be what the shareholding pattern would look like uh, there's no point discussing the shareholding pattern because uh, you know you can find the shareholding pattern uh, on the internet and there's nothing to discuss there's no reasoning as to why there's a particular stake by idea why there's a particular stake by providence it's just how it is so this would be the shareholding pattern where uh, you know uh, bharti airtel 33.8 vodafone 26.7 public 29.3 providence 33.1 idea 7.1 so the merged entity will have the shareholding pattern so now the question is what are the benefits so before going to the benefits i'll give you i'll show you uh, these figures so i said bharti airtel has 40000 towers indus tower has about 120000 towers so the combined company would have a whooping 1.6 lakh towers um, it will consolidate its net debt it will get its net debt at one area uh, its revenue would be combined together so uh, its margin would comparatively increase so um, actually earning margin operating profit margin of bharti airtel is higher than indus towers so basically they can uh, improve on this you know uh, margin the, the point is why have two companies two tower companies and why why take services of both of them why not consolidate them and you know reduce your costs and try to monetize on on your assets sell the assets that you don't need uh, or maybe um, you know uh, come up come up with a better plan that is the point of it why have two companies that give you the same structure you know you have a lot of excess costs and merging is a better idea it is a good idea and i like the management's merge you know the idea of merging yeah and uh, you guys i told you i would tell you what a share share swap is so basically share swap, share swap is um, in which idea for example there'll be a share swap here so share swap is idea would basically um, you know like give it shares of its current company in indus towers and swap its current shares with the new shares of merged entity so basically uh, idea would get for example idea has 11.15% stake in indus towers so idea would surrender its 11.15% stake in indus towers you know and it would acquire 7.1% stake 7.1% stake in the new merged entity so this is what share swap means you are swapping your uh, shares the stake of your current entity with the new merged entity so i'll talk to you about i'll talk about the benefits the industry as a whole is in the face of consolidation with the entry of reliance jio the consolidation will create a much bigger player with approximately 41% market share so this is how uh, so when you have a bully when a bully comes up to you and wants to beat you up so what do you do you gang up on that bully so although three, all the 3 to 4% people who are weak and have been uh, you know being are being bullied by a person who is much larger than them the three to four people can come together and they can stand up to that bully so this is what uh, they are standing up to reliance jio by consolidating and making a bigger player okay creating a pan india tower uh, structure tower company that is the largest outside china are you are you understanding what i'm telling you it will be the largest tower company in the world yeah that is outside china so as of now the chinese uh, in uh, chinese company uh, i don't know which, which company but one of the companies in china has more towers than india i mean then uh, this new merged entity so if uh, indus tower deal takes place 
Pindus Tower will have, you know, uh, will have the second largest number of towers or it will be the largest tower company outside China. Uh, moreover, it will continue to offer high quality passive infrastructure services to all telecom operators on a non discriminatory basis. Well, this third point is basically futile because there will be no other telecom company <laughs> that will come into this picture. Every company is bankrupt or out of this uh, industry. Uh, so actually, I would delete this third point. So basically, there are only two benefits about this. Mm. So getting together, as I told you, it'll, uh, if both these companies get together, they'll have a combined benefit. They'll improve their uh, you know earnings. They'll monetize their assets and they'll have a better plan on how to uh, go ahead in the future all right guys this is pretty much it about uh bharti infra and indus tower merger so if you guys like the video please press the like button and if you guys got any uh, doubts uh, please comment and i would answer them to you as soon as possible thank you and have a nice day